All right, guys, thank you so much for your patience as we work out our technical difficulties. As I mentioned before, my name is Sean Walker and I am the director of DCH's project management office. And we are so appreciative that you are joining us today for the Healthcare Workforce Commission kickoff meeting. Um, this is a very exciting um, uh, initiative for the state of Georgia. And um, we are really looking forward to working with you all on this uh, important project. Before we get into today's agenda, I just want to make a, a couple of housekeeping notes. The first is that the Healthcare Workforce Commission is subject to the Open Meetings Act. So these meetings will be open to the public, they will be recorded and posted on the website. Um, in addition, because we have a lot to get through today, if you have any questions about the information being presented, please use the chat feature to send me a direct message. And if we have an opportunity to address your question during the meeting, we will do so. But if we don't get to it, we will commit to responding to you as quickly as possible after the meeting. So with that being said, I will jump into um, today's agenda. Um, the first topic on today's agenda will have opening remarks. Then we'll go through the commissioner member introductions where we ask you to provide a brief introduction about yourself as well as your priorities for this commission. Um, we will then introduce two of our collaborators um, on the commission. Those are um, the Georgia Board of Healthcare Workforce as well as the Office of Health Strategy and Coordination. We will then get into an overview of the work plan, calendar and key dates, and then we'll have some closing remarks. So without further ado, I will turn it over to the commission chair, Ms. Kaylee Noggle, who is the commissioner for the Department of Community Health to provide us with some opening remarks. Thank you so much, Sean, and thank you to everyone for being here. Um, I promise we tested our IT, uh, the setups three times, even today. Um, best laid plans never fail. Um, but that's, I think, why we're uh, particularly excited to talk later about our key dates and where are some of the locations that we'll be meeting. But again, good afternoon and welcome to the official kickoff um, of the Healthcare Workforce Commission, uh, our first meeting. Again, my name is Kaylee Noggle. I have the pleasure of serving as the commissioner of your Department of Community Health, and I have both the honor and the responsibility of chairing this commission. I'm so appreciative of Governor Kemp and his leadership in establishing this group of experts to tackle such a critical issue. Each of you has been appointed to serve because you represent a sector of the healthcare workforce industry. Thank you for that willingness to serve. The challenges facing the healthcare industry and these professions are no secret and we're only exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. So the work before us is daunting, but critical to Georgia, our citizens, and the state's overall health. Thank you for being willing to, willing to take time out of your normal day job and to dig into this issue with us. I've already been told on several occasions how many other states are paying close attention to the work that we are embarking on. I have no doubt that this group will deliver a well thought out, pragmatic set of recommendations in the final report that if implemented, will result in both near-term and long-term improvements in the overall healthcare workforce. In a few moments, we'll, we'll go around our virtual room and ask each commission member to introduce themselves and to say a few words about the challenges facing your respective uh, profession um, and your aspirations for outcomes from this commission. But before we dive in, into that, I'd like to share with you how I think we might all approach some of this work. As you know, the governor has asked us to examine the state of the healthcare professions and to identify strategies and recommendations for promoting increased workforce availability, hiring, and retention. I'm very cognizant of the magnitude of that task in our relatively short window to complete it with the report being due by December 31st. So I've kind of been framing this work in different or smaller chunks, starting with really taking a look at where are we, where are we today in terms of our healthcare workforce? What are those shortages? What are the fields that are most in critical need? Are there geographic differences? And then looking at where do we need to get to in order to close that gap and in order to provide the best access to quality care for Georgians, taking into consideration both the changing landscape of healthcare delivery as well as our state's changing population trends. 
And then by when do we need to get there? And then we can hone in on a specific, specific areas that the commission might deem most critical, given that we can't boil the entire ocean or fix the entire healthcare profession or industry in one report, where do we need to start? And what are those limiting factors? Perhaps the policy and regulatory levers that we can pull at the state level that will influence supply within the workforce. Perhaps rather than a one singular omnibus legislative bill or a significant budget request, what are the practical and tactical changes we can recommend that will produce the change? Maybe there are ways that we can further look at maximizing educational opportunities with, that already exist within the state uh, to enhance our talent pipeline or other um, credentialing or regulatory factors with some of the, some of the boards that, that might uh, expand our throughput of those um, folks in the pipeline. And then how do we classify those recommendations? Certainly there's an immediate need to provide short-term solutions and relief within the industry. And what are those? How might, might, might we employ those strategies while we also evaluate mid-term and longer-term strategies across the spectrum in the professions that would result in longer term change. I'm looking forward into dive, to forward, uh, looking forward to diving into this work with you and to listening to, to your experiences and thoughts and, and benefiting from your collective years of experience working in your specific fields and profession. So I'm excited to see where we go from here. As we progress through today, you'll hear from both um, of our collaborators. Um, and then we'll dive into a little bit about how I think we're staging some of the work that we need to get through in order to get to a final report. Um, and then we'll also review kind of what our vision is for how we'll conduct these meetings going forward. I hope, honestly, that this is the only time we are completely virtual. I suspect today will be the day that you, um, is the only time that you'll listen as much as you listen. And I suspect all of the rest of the meetings to be much more collaborative as we really dive into the work. And so happy to take your feedback, feedback after today. I look forward to meeting all of you in person as soon as we can, hopefully next month. And just shout out to our staff here at DCH, particularly Sean Walker, as she said, our director of the project management office, who will be a, an integral part to this work from the staff support side, as well as Mariel Ellis, our chief of staff, and Russell Carlson, our chief health policy over officer. So with that, I'll pause. I'll turn it back over to Sean to lead us through um, member introductions. All right. Thank you so much, Commissioner. I appreciate that. So we will move on to our next topic, which is the commissioner member introductions. So I, once I call your name, if you could go into your brief introduction and um, what you hope to see come out of this commission, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, first um, commission member, Mr. Well, let me say before I get started, if I mispronounce your name, <laughs> I apologize. So please don't hesitate to correct me so I can get it um, correct for future meetings. But Scott? Both. Yes. Well done, by the way. That was excellent for the first try. Um, uh, Scott Bulky, I'm a uh, physician, family physician practicing in Brooklyn, Georgia, which is outside of Statesboro, Georgia, which is outside of Savannah, Georgia. So most people uh, understand where Savannah is. Um, I'm on the uh, Georgia Board of Healthcare Workforce. I see that Terry McFadden, Dr. McFadden is on as well. So that's great to see. Um, we've been working on trying to get people to the rural areas to um, practice medicine. And I guess my focus would be, you know, retention of the folks that are already there, both uh, the ones who are actually in the field and doing uh, the work in the rural areas, as well as, you know, uh, enticing and trying to get uh, residents where I think we've really expanded uh, residency programs here in the state to keep them in the state instead of uh, training them and then let them go to other states to practice medicine. So I'm looking forward to that and uh, everything else that we can to help the state. Uh, I think there's several other issues, but you mentioned brief introduction, so um, I will stop stop there. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so our next commission member, Sherry Danello. Good afternoon. Are you on the line, Sherry? Okay. Sorry about that. No, I was talking away. No, uh, no hi, everyone. My, I am Sherry Danello. I'm the Vice President of Patient Care Services at St. Joe's Candler in Savannah, Georgia. Um, I've held that role for quite some time since uh, 1997. I was a part of the team that put, the, to, put this health system together, and I've remained here ever since. Uh, the system has 
continue to grow um, around me. So as time has gone on, I've uh, taken on more and more uh, responsibility. Uh, I am a nurse. I um, uh, am very proud that both of our organizations have achieved magnet designation five times. I've been um, privileged to lead that um, effort uh, from the beginning. Um, in my current role, I, I cover lots of different areas. I have, um, you know, both emergency departments, um, all of nursing, um, acute, uh, one of two acute rehab units, one skilled nursing unit, um, inpatient and outpatient therapies, um, including speech and respiratory therapy, PT and OT. Also, I work with the pharmacy and wound care, inpatient and outpatient patient to, to name just to throw a few. And, and I, I have definitely worked through many, um, many shortages on the recruiting side, um, on the retaining and engaging side, and um, also I've been responsible and accountable for staffing hospitals for quite, uh, quite some time. So I, I am convinced uh, that it's really already been said that this isn't, um, this, this shortage is, is really different. And I do, um, I'm very excited to be a part of this group to really come up with some sustainable um, evidence-based um, change that will um, help us recruit, retain, and also staff um, the areas that uh, need to be staffed to care for the populations that um, we serve. My priorities um, are uh, really getting people um, interested in healthcare at an early age, um, and developing educational models to uh, support them, pathways that can um, create long-term um, job growth and uh, satisfaction. And then, you know, I, I, I tell you, this pandemic really has um, taken the joy out of, um, out of healthcare. And uh, being a service profession, um, there at one point was a lot of joy. So I, I hope that whatever we work on, we can um, bring that, that joy back into the workplace. Another priority I have is um, the work-life balance and staff safety and um, the violence that um, people are so worried about these days that work in healthcare. And then the care models, um, I, I, I passionately believe that the care models um, that we have developed over time that in many cases are RN intensive really have to be redeveloped um, so that it's more of a team, um, a team approach. Um, I, I, I also believe that the social issues my ED experience really has um, brought to light the social issues that our populations are feeling. Um, and um, overall, I, I just really hope that we can um, come up with both quality and business cases for um, areas in this very um, changing workforce that we can um, that we can stabilize. I'm a huge supporter of education. Um, uh, but, um, you know, I don't think they can, they can really do it alone. I know education has worked really hard in recent years to expand programs, um, and they have done a good job at that, but it, it's not really educational alone. It really is the delivery model um, as well. So again, very excited to be here and look forward to meeting everybody, seeing some old friends and making some new ones. Thank you so much for that, Sherry. Uh, good afternoon, Sean Little. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sean Little. I am the campus president for Chamberlain Atlanta. I am also part of the foundation of the Georgia Nurses uh, Association and part of the coalition. Uh, my priority here is um, in academic support in building a sustainable workforce, including building faculty pipelines, board of nursing support. I'd like to see resiliency in new graduates. Um, I'd like to see nursing as a desired for traditional support. I'm looking for equitable access to education through all delivery modalities of education, including private and public. The challenges, uh, quality faculty and the numbers that we need, uh, student engagement and a sustainable pipeline, and clinical availability, specifically cl clinical availability. Um, what would I like to see? I would like to see actual changes that will impact the health within the state of Georgia. Um, 
we're, we should stop talking about it and, and start doing it. We talk a lot. I'd like to see some actions behind those words. And then I would also like to see a sustainable partnership within healthcare professions. Let us work together. We're not against each other. We're with each other. Um, and I'm appreciative of the time and, and the consideration. And thank you so much for letting me be a part of this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Uh, good afternoon, Courtney Terwilliger. Are you there, Courtney? All right, we can come back around. Sally Perry. Good afternoon, Sally. Good afternoon, this is Sally Perry. I am the Regional Vice President working with Universal Health Services and work with multiple behavioral health psychiatric programs throughout Georgia. I have experience with inpatient, outpatient, residential foster care. Um, and my priority is really uh, bringing and ensuring mental health is part of the discussion as I'm sure everyone here is aware that Behavioral health um, definitely affects all areas of healthcare uh, and the unique challenges that working with the behavioral health population um, presents to healthcare employees and the challenges we've had with recruiting and retention. And I'm very uh, thankful to be on the committee. All right. Thanks so much, Sally. Rick Roche, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. I am uh, Rick Roach. I'm the Chief People Officer at Grady. I uh, suspect Grady doesn't need an introduction. And um, the pandemic has exacerbated, I think, a challenge already challenging market for talent in healthcare, uh, specifically in Georgia. Uh, so I, I would like to see us put together a roadmap um, to ensure the availability of workforce, clinical and otherwise. Uh, in the state. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Mary Chapman. Chapman. Good afternoon. I'm Mary Chapman. Um, I'm a nurse of 32 years. Um, I'm a former uh, Georgia Board of Nursing um, uh, member uh, when I was in Savannah, Georgia. Um, in my full-time job and an executive vice president of, of Wellstar Health System, uh, where I'm responsible for nine of the 11 hospitals, um, but also, in, also include oversight for our post-acute services, as well as the current chief nurse executive for Wellstar works directly um, on my team. Um, I, I had the opportunity also to uh, work uh, in collaboration. I'm a uh, GHA uh, board member and so chaired um, the GHA uh, Workforce Council in collaboration with the amazing GHA staff um, and then also with uh, Sellers and Dorsey and then also uh, all of my teaching hospital colleagues. So had an amazing uh, engagement with that team and um, our latest work is related to uh, Commissioner looking at the metrics and um, really fine tuning those. Um, I guess I would agree with uh, the information and the feedback that everyone gave and, I, and, and in my mind in terms of our sort of utopian world that we'd like to live in related to workforce, um, I think in four buckets, um, sort of people, processes, uh, technology and policy. Um, so as we uh, move forward talking about our challenges, uh, when I think of most of the things that we face on a day-to-day -day basis, they fall somewhere within um, those buckets at some either macro or, or micro level. So uh, I know like Sherry, a number of people on this commission, so good opportunity to uh, rekindle some old relationships um, and just look forward to the collaboration. I've been in Georgia for, um, no, I was in North Carolina before Georgia, and I'm just super, super impressed uh, with our proactiveness in Georgia and our ability to uh, engage our leaders uh, and um, to bring our, for, our voices to the table. So again, Commissioner, thank you so much and look forward to meeting you in person. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mary. Um, good afternoon, Janie Dock.
Good afternoon, it's Janae Dock. Um, I'm the Chief Nursing Officer at Piedmont Augusta. Um, been a nurse for 19 years, been here at this organization for 19 years and played a number of roles here. Um, currently, uh, one of the um, member areas that I serve on, I am on the Columbia County Chamber Commission on their workforce um, commission as a task force as well, trying to help the workforce in the community. Um, I've had throughout my career many opportunities to work on retention, recruitment, engagement of some of our fellow academic areas that are around um, here. So I had some great experience in working through that. Um, I think we all had that same experience of trying to make everything work um, during the pandemic, pandemic and getting creative and understanding the exacerbation of um, the healthcare workforce demand um, during that time. Some of my priorities um, that I would like to see um, addressed during this is creating solidified and sustainable pipelines for all healthcare organizations, um, whether that be our EMT services, because we witnessed um, a shortage in those as well, our physicians and their practices. I heard one of the physicians in our rural area speak earlier. Um, of course, nursing is always there. And then even some of our allied health um, profession. So really trying to work to get some solidified and sustainable pipelines for them. Um, whatever kind of academia support, I would like to see what the data um, looks like for that and how we can help to provide some academia support um, to help assist with the demands that the healthcare workforce needs. And then collaboration amongst the multiple di disciplines to brainstorm and problem solve for future healthcare workforce needs, um, all to be able to continue to care for our communities and help redefine purpose and attractability to the healthcare um, fields. So those are kind of my priorities. Awesome. Thank you for that, Janae. Good afternoon, Scott Steiner. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for your time today, and I so appreciate this uh, this commission being set up by the governor. Uh, my name is Scott Steiner. I'm the, the, my privilege to be the president and CEO for Phoebe Putney Health System in Southwest Georgia. Uh, we serve a predominantly rural population in Southwest Georgia. Uh, I would call Albany maybe small urban, uh, but we serve more than half a million uh, rural residents of our state. Uh, and uh, you know, we do that through four hospital campuses and a variety of physician offices, urgent care centers, home health, and and, and the cadre of, of services that, that, that surround uh, care for, for our community. Uh, I think from a priority standpoint, a lot of our, my colleagues have already have mentioned these, but uh, first, first, mate, first for us is, is data. Uh, we, we sure do need uh, good data so we can, we can speak to what our true needs are. Um, and, and so that, that would be a, a priority. Uh, I think the others are you know, how we can inspire uh, more students to consider healthcare as a career, uh, and and certainly not just those that are entering college. We need to get into our high schools and our middle schools, and and uh, show some of our our youth that uh, this is a possibility, that something they've never thought of today. Uh, whether it be a nurse or a doctor, uh, 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 an EMT, uh, a lab tech, uh, there are so many uh, opportunities, and we need to be in our schools and be passionate about doing that. Uh, third is to, to really show uh, mid-career adults that healthcare can be an option for them, especially if they have a calling uh, to care for what is oftentimes uh, uh, our community or people's most vulnerable time of their life. And, and again, show them, can connect those dots for them that this is possible and, and it doesn't take, you know, four more years of, of, of college that, that uh, we can make it happen. And, and, and quite frankly, we can do it uh, at little or no cost. And last would be to continue to partner with our academic uh, colleagues. Uh, we know uh, we've already done quite a bit of that, but uh, more needs to be done. Uh, and uh, as opposed to just uh, expecting it to be done, we need to be active participants. All aspects of, of healthcare need to be active participants in that. So again, appreciate the opportunity to be here today with you all. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Tanya, Sudia, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, that's correct. I'm Tanya Sudia, Dean of the College of Nursing at Augusta University, and it is um, certainly an honor and um, pleasure to be able to serve as part of this along with um, esteemed colleagues here. 
So our College of Nursing has, uh, for the USG system, um, the largest nursing um, enrollment and most comprehensive um, majors offered uh, within nursing. But really interested in um, hearing from others as well as, as bringing forth ideas for some um, additional innovation in terms of especially the clinical component of nursing education programs, how we can further partner to um, further increase enrollment um, for that nursing pipeline in particular. And um, as well as to look at models for retaining faculty, we often hear more about incentives and in retaining staff nurses. That's of course very critical to, um, to do as well, but some of those incentives for attracting faculty um, to nursing programs as well as um, retaining them. And also on a, an academic health science campus with medicine, dentistry, and all of the allied health professions, also hoping to um, bring their voice um, to the table as well. So thank you for this opportunity. Awesome, thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Spina Dalton. Hello, so I could get my video to work. Here we go, hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Debbie Dalton. It says Despina Dalton, but everybody knows me as Debbie, so Debbie is fine. Um, I am a board-certified pediatric emergency physician. I'm double board in PEDS and PDM. Uh, currently, I serve as a hospital uh, CMO and uh, vice president of medical affairs and physician advisor for Wellstar Douglas Hospital. I'm the immediate past president of the Georgia Composite Medical Board and secretary for the Medical Association of Georgia past president of Cobb County Medical Society as well, and um, a fellow of the American College of Healthcare Executives. I think globally, um, my aspirations throughout the state um, are, are to be able to help participate and develop any kind of programs or processes that are gonna encourage physicians to, and, and, and APPs or extenders um, to work, live, and stay in Georgia. I'm big on retention. Uh, I would love for somebody to grow some roots, especially in rural Georgia, but also, uh, neighboring counties outside of Metro Atlanta. And we could do that possibly through different incentives, but also through expansion of telemedicine, expanding hospital resources, which I think is really important to get physicians to be able to have some place to uh, send their patients to, to, to get higher level of care, but also looking at um, how we can help medical students and support them and, um, and, uh, and other students as well too, of course, uh, to make sure that they're, they're feeling supported and not, not burning out and, uh, you know, maybe increasing medical student, medical school um, positions and residencies, but I, I'm really thrilled about this opportunity and I look forward to working with all of you. Awesome, thank you so much for that, Debbie. You're welcome. Uh, circling back to Sherry Danello, are you on the line? Um, we heard from Sherry. Oh, oh, okay. Courtney. Courtney, yes. Courtney, yes. So I am here uh, when I when I make my machine work. Uh, my name is Courtney Twilliger, and I'm actually the uh, public safety coordinator now for Manuel County. My my history is 45 years of EMS, 43 years as an EMS director. I served as the chairman of the board for the Georgia Association of EMS and uh, chaired the state EMS advisory council for several years. And I'm currently a member of the Georgia Trauma Commission. Uh, EMS has been my love for a long time. So I, there's two things I really hope that we can accomplish, or I can help accomplish, is one, I want uh, people to have a greater understanding of the challenges that the EMS profession has, and uh, as second to that piece, that the opportunities the healthcare community, I think, misses by not utilizing EMS professionals up to their, up to their uh, abilities. And the, the next thing is, is near to me is to try to find a way to get more people involved in our profession. The workload continues to go up and the number of people who are willing to do it continues to go down. So those are my two uh, desires. And I'm very pleased to be on and looking forward to working with you. All right, thank you for that, Courtney. Uh, we have two members of the commission who are not able to join us today, but they did provide some information that I would like to share with you on their behalf. Um, Dr. Clark Hill is from the Hill Medical Group, and he would like to focus on or the, uh, the deficiencies that he's identified that he would like the commission to work on are 
staffing, staffing, staffing. That's his emphasis on that. Access to health care, physician shortage in hospice and nursing home medicine, as well as the cost of medical school in Georgia. Dr. Jean Sumner from Mercer University, her thoughts on the work to work on the commission is a commitment to remove educational licensure and insurance obstacles to physicians, nurses, and other health professionals entering the workforce and serving, um, entering the workforce and serving in an effective, safe manner. She also would like us to recognize the severely unbalanced distribution of the healthcare workforce in Georgia and find ways to achieve an equitable distribution. She also mentioned prioritizing mental health workforce access by setting high expectations for deliverables and response. So we appreciate you all giving us your backgrounds and your areas of focus for the commission. That information is very well taken. And um, we will move on to the next item on the agenda. And that is an introduction to the Georgia Board of Healthcare Workforce. I will um, stop sharing my screen because we have Chet Basin and Dr. McFadden who will lead us through that introduction. Good afternoon, Chet. All right, I think you're on mute, Chet. Yes, sorry about that. It was good afternoon and thank you for having us here today. Um, got a presentation I'm loading up and uh, give it a moment. Okay, can, can you see that? Yes, we can see that. Great, well, I wanna say thank you again to Commissioner Noggle and thank you again to Sean for allowing us to present here today. We're um, on behalf of the Georgia Board of Healthcare Workforce. Um, we are chaired by Dr. Terry McFadden, who's on the call here today. And I serve as the executive director. I've been in the role for a little over a month, so I'm going to do my best here today to uh, convey the great work the organization has done um, for for a number of decades. And be Scott, before you get started, if I could just say hello to everyone. I'm Terry McFadden. I'm a general pediatrician in Atlanta, and have the the honor of chairing uh, the the workforce board, which uh, Chad is going to share um, some highlights about. We have had. You know, we've transitioned from being the physician workforce board to healthcare workforce, and he'll share some of those details, but really excited about the prospects that this commission brings for uh, serving Georgia's citizens. Thank you, Dr. McFadden. Um, so the mission and the vision for, for the workforce board, uh, the mission is uh, strives to identify the physician, physician assistant, advanced practice, registered nurse and dentist workforce needs of the Georgia communities and to meet those to the need of support and development of medical education programs, which I'll talk about in a little bit here in a few minutes. And our vision is uh, the Georgia Board of Healthcare Workforce works to see Georgia communities, especially in medically underserved areas, have improved access to needed physicians and other healthcare practitioners, thereby enhancing the health and well-being of Georgia citizens. Um, on this screen, what, uh, wanted to convey is just kind of the history. Uh, the Workforce Board was started in 1976 and uh, the, the founding individuals did a great job in terms of, if you look at the bullet point number two, um, there was four family medicine programs in 1976 and they were able to triple it to 12 by 2014. So that, um, that was a great start. In 1983, it was identified that some additional specialties and funding was needed and that was added. Um, then moving forward to 1999, um, the, the terminology changed to the Georgia Board of Physician Workforce due to um, the expanded need beyond the uh, family practice um, area. And then again in 2019 is when the Georgia Board of Healthcare Workforce adopted its current name, which encompasses not just physicians, but NPs, PAs, and dentists, and all funding that flows, through, uh, all funding flows for medical education through the Georgia Board of Healthcare Workforce, except for those for, uh, um, through the Board of Regents for the Medical College of Georgia at Augusta University. Um, 
the the purpose of the board really it's it's really been conveyed through the mission and the vision what I've what I've shared before um, is really just to address the needs and to ensure that Georgia has the appropriate supply of healthcare workforce workers in the appropriate spots uh, meaning the communities that perhaps might be underserved. Um, we do administer a loan repayment program, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes. Uh, also, we'll be discussing in a few minutes about some reports that we put out. We actually do uh, quite a bit of reporting. A lot of this is going to be found on our website. The link will be shared at the end. And we also communicate with various members of the uh, General Assembly and or their staff just to assist them in uh, providing them um, opinion on our part. Um, and, th and that's that's it. Um, our board composition is of 15 members, all of which are appointed by the governor. Um, four of them are primary care physicians, two of which come from rural areas. Four of them are physicians who are not primary care physicians, and again, two can come from rural areas. Three of which come are representatives from hospitals that are not teaching hospitals, two members being a representative from a, of a rural not-for-profit hospital, and two members can be physicians from that group. We do have one dentist, one physician assistant, one nurse practitioner, um, back to us uh, expanding our scope in 2019. And then there is one individual who serves who um, has um, no health care um, uh, as part of his daily, uh, uh, daily employment. He's um, uh, just a non-healthcare individual. And the, the, the board strives to represent the diversity of the entire state of Georgia um, from geographics, race, and gender. And last but not least, uh, we do meet quarterly and uh, our meetings are also open um, for anyone who's interested in them. So moving forward to 20, uh, 2023, um, I stated a few minutes ago, I am new in the role. Um, these are really the, the key bullets that we're gonna be working on. Um, as many of you know, House Bill 1013 uh, was enacted recently. Uh, part of it is a behavioral health minimum data set that needs to be created. Um, what I can share is, the initial conversations have begun with the respective agencies and boards that were listed in there. And we are uh, collectively planning a path forward to uh, fulfilling that requirement um, with the healthcare uh, workforce board uh, named as the, the entity that will um, oversee the process. Um, we also uh, have the medical education advisory committee. Um, that's an advisory committee to the healthcare workforce board. Uh, we've enjoyed an excellent relationship with them over the years, and they've advised the Workforce Board on a number of items. Looking forward to continuing and growing that relationship. Um, in fact, during the introductions, I think we had a number of members who, uh, if not themselves, members of their organization are part of the MEAC committee. Um, something coming up pretty soon, <clears throat> the, uh, we've been appropriated $3 million for, um, to disperse to a competitive grant process for nursing schools. Um, that is for schools that have a wait list with additional capacity. So we're working on the, um, the criteria for that. Um, so that's part of the scope, again, going beyond just the physicians. Uh, working again with additional nursing licensing, uh, additional licensing boards, including nursing, but others as well, just to have the best and most current data available. So everyone, um, not just on this call, but in general can make the best decisions to uh, uh, provide the best staffing here for the state of Georgia. And then I mentioned the loan repayment a moment ago. Um, that, it, that goes to the next bullet about working with regional players. Um, the goal is really to expand the knowledge about um, that program, which I'll share some data with you in a few minutes, in terms of making sure everybody who is potentially thinking of uh, looking at opportunities in uh, other parts of Georgia or all corners of the state know that this is available for them if they want to open up a practice. And then la uh, last but not least, um, in terms of medical education with residencies and fellowships, uh, looking forward to see how we can expand the reach there. High level, this, uh, as I transition, this is our budget. Again, these are the monies that have been appropriate for fiscal 23. And I'm just going to use each of the budgetary programs as I move forward as a way to kind of talk about what we do um, as part of um, hopefully educating folks um, on what, what the Workforce Board has been doing. Um, as you can see, this list is expansive. Uh, many organizations are on here. Uh, we've got from all corners of the state, um, uh, we've got everybody who, uh, who is in various communities providing care and uh, helping um, uh, move healthcare forward. Um, really, that, that's the goal here is just to show that we work with everyone. We want to work with everyone. Um, if there's a name that's not on here, then we would like to hear from you because um, our goal is to, to be equal access. Um, 
As I move on, um, you'll see that earlier when I listed the budget, there were two operating grants that were um, line listed. One is from Mercer University and one is from Morehouse University. I've listed some high level details. Um, this is back, uh, this was formed back in 1989 when um, uh, they, they had decided a, uh, and I think it's a great idea, state and private partnerships uh, would be a good way to advance medical education here in the great state of Georgia. Um, there are some contingencies on the money. One um, I will, I'll, I'll list is 50% uh, of the students must go to a primary care track um, in order to receive the monies. Um, but both uh, Mercer and Morehouse um, have been doing this with the Healthcare Workforce Board for a number of years. As you, and as you can see, um, monies have been allocated there um, through the various, diff, uh, various uh, programs. Um, as I transition on to the physicians for rural areas, so this is the, the loan forgiveness program as many, um, many know it that way. Um, you can see that there are different dollar amounts listed. So physician and dentist can qualify for $25,000 um, on an initial round, and they can renew up to three times. The same thing for an initial and three renewals for an APRN and PA, but the amount is $10,000 annually. Um, there are some, <clears throat> some rules. They're all listed on our website, um, but the big ones are um, they have to work in a Georgia county with a population of 50,000 or less. Have to be in the primary care or core specialties and practice full time. Uh, if you look, see the map on the right, anything in red is a county that qualifies with that 50,000 or less threshold. Um, specific call out I'd like to mention is um, I mentioned earlier about um, dealing or reaching out to more regional providers to create awareness for this loan program. Our goal really is to ensure that everybody and anybody who could benefit from it is aware of it. And to that end, um, here is the um, fiscal year 2022 awards made. We did make 90, uh, we awarded 94 different recipients through the, the different um, line items that you can see here. Um, as part of this program, we also um, historically have done what's called a practice opportunity day. Um, now obviously with COVID-19, things have changed and uh, how things are done are a little differently but we look forward to restarting a practice opportunity day on top of um, reaching out to those regional players to ensure that they're aware of it. Um, transitioning over to GME and UME, um, we have a data analytics team that does a variety of surveys. Um, this is just one data point and our surveys are available on our website for anybody who wants to uh, go through them in detail. Um, but in the 2021 um, survey, and the 2022 one is uh, literally underway right now, so we should have that one finalized shortly. Um, the data point here I'm just trying to show is that the uh, respondents uh, will list how much uh, their debt is, uh, tying back to the loan repayment program and keeping these physicians here in Georgia or dentists, APRNs, but this is purely a physician uh, respondent list is what I'm showing you. And you'll see that the average or the mean of all this is $276,089. So the ability to potentially qualify for up to $100,000, assuming they get it um, for the initial round in the three years for a physician can be quite helpful given the, the amount of debt that our physicians are uh, graduating with. Um, additionally, with uh, undergraduate medical education, also known as medical school, just, um, um, just to uh, connect the dots there for those who might need it. Um, there, and nursing school dollars that I mentioned earlier. Um, we do have medical school capitation dollars. Um, those dollars are allocated to Emory, Mercer, PCOM, and Morehouse. And you'll see uh, their respective um, student counts next to their names and then the rate of $6,363 uh, directly above that. It, these must be certified residents of the state of Georgia. Um, that, that is um, uh, the, uh, the requirement. Um, our surveying shows that those who are from Georgia have a higher propensity to stay in the state and thus uh, fulfilling our workforce needs. Um, what I also wanna highlight is uh, we did do, as I said, we do a lot of surveys. Um, this survey, again, available to you on, uh, online if you showed so desire, um, will talk to you about what the factors that um, the respondents state in terms of um, uh, specialty residency selection location um, in terms of like what they consider when they think about their next step. So a um, lot, lot of good data there. Uh, I do want to call out there were 
money's also um, appropriated to PCOM for their South Georgia campus development that our board um, was part of. And last but not least, that was the, the $3 million that I mentioned moments ago for the nursing school, which the program or, or any other, anything else regarding it hasn't been um, uh, listed yet because we are yet to devise it, but we are working on that to get that out soon. Um, talking about new GME programs here, um, as you can see, I've got a variety of um, institutions on the left um, that span all four corners of the state. This is uh, programs that this spans from 2015 all the way to 2027. There are two slides. So I'm going to transition in a second to the next slide, but you'll see it's primarily IM, psych, family, um, and OB gym, OB gym and, um, and some EM in there. Um, the, the highlight, what I really want to point out is um, the healthcare, healthcare Workforce Board since 2015 um, over 800 GME spots have been added in the state of Georgia. And as we go from present to the next four years through fiscal 27, um, we're going to have a little over 100 more come online. Um, you'll see four names listed here in the bottom, Coffee Regional in Douglas, Southeast Georgia Health System in Brunswick, Southern Regional in Riverdale, and Memorial Health Meadows Hospital, um, who are still in some planning and development stage. But um, them plus um, the, the other programs listed on um, these slides here, I'll flashback for a second, are, are going to contribute to an another 100 more GME slots, which we're, we're really excited about. Um, also, I talked some, a few moments ago about all the data and the surveys, and we do an exit survey annually, and that's another one that's going on right now. So I've got the 21 results here. Um, just some high-level takeaways. Um, it talks about how the results we learned is 65% of respondents who earned a high, uh, attended high school here in Georgia intend to stay in Georgia for the next year. 44.9% um, of the respondents plan to stay in Georgia after graduation, whether they're in training or practice. Obviously, proximity to family, fellowship training, and better jobs. Um, were the most commonly cited reasons for leaving Georgia. Um, and uh, I think we, um, that, that was clearly listed. Uh, we did talk about the debt already and then the percentage of students, uh, respondents, I should say, identifying as black and Hispanic has increased um, over the past five years. So um, these results uh, or these surveys are really helpful and again, available to everybody. Um, the other thing I wanted to um, highlight also is that our employees have met with uh, GME program coordinators to ensure resident physicians are um, have the resources they need to effectively get into practice here in Georgia, obtain a medical license, and just um, kind of those uh, those ABC steps to to go from in training to in practice. Should they want to set up shop in one of our lovely communities? Um, high level from a data analysis perspective, um, we are doing a lot of data and I've got a couple of maps I'm gonna show you um, here in a minute, which show um, by licensure and location, what the, the rate is uh, traditionally in a per 100,000 of uh, population when we can in those counties. Um, what I can tell you going forward, there's gonna be from our workforce board increased focus on working with other agencies uh, for other licensure types, just to ensure that we're, we're producing the, the relevant data that can be used by everybody. Um, and as well, I, I do want to highlight that uh, on our website, there are a lot of fact sheets that uh, might help out if you're engaging in a certain product uh, project. And uh, in 2021, we uh, did move some of our data to a new vis visualization tool that was updated. And those conversations are continuing with the Georgia Data Analytics Center um, to use their visualization tool, hopefully, if not later this year, next year, to, um, to have it even enhanced a little bit more. I'm um, going to close out with a few maps. Um, what you're going to see here is uh, the first one, the darker the purple, the more the saturation. It's a rate per 100,000. And this is the rate of physicians, uh, by, uh, primary care service area. And then conversely, I'm going to show, I'm going to flip back. Um, you see counties with no physicians, period, regardless of specialty. So if it's purple, that means there is no physician out there. So I'm going to flip back. And you'll see the saturation rate um, by phys uh, for physicians by county, and then counties with no physicians. So transition over the purple here reflects this is 2020 data. It's the most recent we've got. Um, counties with no internal medicine physicians. So again, uh, definitely in the middle part of our state, uh, some uh, some work for us to be, be all be working on. And then with Physician assistants, uh, same thing, the darker the yellow or the lighter the green is the more the saturation. 
Um, this is the rate per 100,000. And nursing, I know, is uh, extremely important and uh, high on everyone's list. These are, this is RNs. The darker the red, the greater the saturation. Um, what you'll see here is where the red is concentrated. I'm going to flip to LPNs in a second. And the, my takeaway was you'll see the darker red um, in areas where it was lighter with RNs. So that was kind of a, a takeaway um, that I had looking at. I'm going to flip back to RNs. And then I'm going to go to LPNs, and this will all be made available after this um, after this meeting. And last but not least, our dentists. Um, again, darker blue means greater saturation, and you can see where those are at. And the lighter blue to white is uh, little to no dentist um, from a rate of 100,000 for the population. Um, so with that, I you know I'm going to wrap up and just I hope that this presentation for some allowed uh, allowed you to learn what the Healthcare Workforce Board has been doing, how our origins were, and it just helps out in general in terms of some of the data that um, and knowledge that is available um, should you ever need it. So with that, I thank you for your time and hope you have a great rest of your afternoon. And thank you, Chet. And um, Commissioner Nagel, if I could have a minute just to to give a, a few comments. I, you know, first of all, not bad for having been in the position for a month at probably the most active time that I've seen the board in, in my uh, tenure on the board. So thank you to Chet for coming in and, uh, and rolling up his sleeves and getting busy. You see, there's a lot to unpack. And as I try to organize in my own brain, what the board's been doing and what our priorities are for the future, just a couple of comments, basically that we've had quite a bit of transition from the original intent when the board was not a board back when it focused on family physicians. And we're still trying to figure out, um, especially now that uh, House Bill 1013 was added, how the mental health, mental and behavioral health workforce um, starts to factor into the, the data that we're collecting. Also, uh, if there are other parts of the healthcare workforce um, that we as a board uh, need to be addressing. So we're still uh, trying to figure that out. Um, I will say that if we, if you looked at our focus areas, data, data wrangling is one of them. And I think the visualization tools have been very helpful over the last few years in trying to identify uh, where our needs are, where the gaps are. Um, you know, as a pediatrician, I always point out the, the slide that shows that 65 counties in Georgia don't have a pediatrician. Uh, and so that's always important as you try to figure out where, where efforts will, will go next. In terms of big buckets of work, obviously we're working on increasing workforce, uh, which is about recruitment. Um, and our GME programs have been very successful in doing that. Um, the work of the great committee uh, helped to uh, lay the groundwork for having those additional GME slots. Uh, and we look forward to continuing to do that work um, you know, with the legislature, um, you know, there are some areas, again, I'm a pediatrician, so I'll talk about how pediatrics wasn't, children weren't really included because of the intricacies about the way that, um, that uh, pediatrics uh, programs have to be established. Um, we've been interfacing with the medical institutions, the academic partners uh, to make sure that we are growing uh, the, the healthcare workforce that we need. Um, particularly for our rural areas and trying to think creatively and innovatively about how we position training in rural areas. In terms of retaining workforce um, or uh, keeping them in Georgia, the loan repayment has been very um, successful. And the only thing that's stopping us from doing more with loan repayment is having enough funds to be able to um, to actually award to all of the people who qualify and apply, which we usually cannot do. Um, and then creating service delivery. As we look to the future, you know, thinking about service delivery models that are actually sustainable in communities that may not be able to support a physician. How do you provide those services? Uh, as I said, following up on the wonderful work of the Great Commission to increase the number of, uh, of slots in Georgia, creating an environment that actually um, entices uh, physicians to come to Georgia and stay in Georgia, which requires maybe zooming out a little bit beyond the traditional uh, lens. 
And then thinking about pipeline, Chat shared with you that we have really good data that you know, if you if you go to medical school in Georgia, you're more likely to stay in Georgia. If you go to, to a college and high school in Georgia, you're even more likely. And so as we think about pipeline uh, from the very beginning, from high school, how we start to grow the members of our healthcare workforce. And finally, just thinking about how health is really, healthcare is not just about treating illness, it's about uh, promoting wellness and promoting health and how we, keep that lens in front of us because that's where we start to get our, our savings in terms of uh, our healthcare dollars. So thank you so much. Um, there's a lot to unpack. We hope that, uh, you know, we definitely will be a resource. I shout out to uh, Dr. Bolke, who's a member of our board uh, and Dean Sumner, who's a member of our MEAC committee. Uh, so looking forward to the great work that the commission will do. Thank you, Dr. McFadden, and thank you, um, Chet, for the presentation. We do have a question from uh, Mary Chapman. Does your PA map include nurse practitioners? It should not, but I'm more than glad to uh, double check um, and then circle back up. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Sure. The next item on our agenda is an introduction to um, the Office of Healthcare Health Strategy and Coordination. So let me share this presentation. Now I'll introduce Grant Thomas. Grant, I am pulling up your presentation now. Great, thank you. Good afternoon, Grant. Perfect. Thank you, Sean, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Sean said, my name is uh, Grant Thomas, and I currently serve um, as the director of the Office of Health Strategy and Coordination uh, for the state of Georgia. Um, I'm ex really excited to join you today um, and for the role the commission is positioned to play um, in Georgia's healthcare system. Um, OHSC is looking forward to being a part of this effort, um, and I'm looking forward to working with you all on the commission. I'm also very appreciative to Commissioner Noggle and her team for their leadership of this commission and for the invitation to introduce you all to OHSC. Um, I wanted to start off with a brief history of the office and its priorities, and then touch quickly on several projects um, and initiatives uh, that I believe could be of interest to the commission um, as it begins its work to address challenges um, in the hiring and retention of healthcare workers. Um, so the Office of Health Strategy and Coordination um, is a new office within state government, relatively new office within state government. Um, it's a division of the Governor's Office of Planning and Budget, and it was established through House Bill 186 during the uh, 2019 legislative session. Uh, a lot of you may remember it was a big omnibus bill, and uh, uh, the provisions to create OHSC uh, were included in that bill. Um, and the office's uh, purpose is to help strengthen and support the healthcare infrastructure of the state uh, by interconnecting health functions and sharing resources across multiple state agencies and overcoming the barriers uh, to coordination of healthcare. With so many agencies um, working on a lot of the same issues, but they all have uh, very distinct uh, roles. So making sure um, everyone's coordinating and that uh, we're, we're focused on addressing the same challenges. Um, Governor Kemp appointed me to serve as director of OHSC in June of 2021. Uh, following the office being funded by the General Assembly uh, for the first time during the 2021 legislative session. Uh, since then, we have uh, fully staffed uh, OHSC, uh, like I said, as a new office, so uh, you know, fully staffed it for the first time um, and initiated work on the office's main priorities, um, working with agencies and uh, many uh, state and outside stakeholders um, to help improve the healthcare landscape uh, in Georgia and coordinate different strategic actions. Um, 
so going on to slide three, um, the powers and duties of the office, um, which uh, some of which I just touched on, but uh, these those of which are enumerated in statute include uh, facilitating uh, collaboration and coordination between state agencies, coordinating state health functions and programs, serving as a forum for identifying uh, Georgia's specific health issues of greatest concern and promoting cooperation from both public and private agencies to test new and innovative ideas. Um, our office also advises the governor's office on health policy issues. Um, many of the healthcare issues and projects that you know, we've undertaken in our first year in operation contain elements uh, related to healthcare workforce and strengthening uh, that healthcare workforce. Um, and as the commission uh, embarks, embarks on this work, uh, like I said earlier, thought it would be helpful to provide a brief overview of just some of the healthcare, some, some of the projects we're working on that uh, pertain to healthcare workforce issues uh, specifically, and some of those issues we've encountered and uh, would like to collaborate with you all on going forward. So one of those has been a nursing shortage. Um, we all know there's there are challenges um, uh, with the nursing uh, sector, specifically within healthcare. Uh, we've been working to identify solutions to address the nursing workforce shortage issues that have been exacerbated uh, by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, options that we've explored, different avenues, or you know, re-examining degree programs and supervisory requirements, those ratios, um, loan repayment options, college and career academy pathways, and how those intersect with the technical college system um, in order to really improve that uh, nursing workforce pipe, uh, pipeline. Um, I know a few of the commission members, uh, spe specifically Scott and um, uh, Chet, uh, discuss data. So data and data sharing have been a major uh, priority for OHSC. Um, most notably, our efforts to establish and implement an all-payer claims database uh, for the state, which over 20 other states have done. Uh, this APCD will serve as a repository of healthcare, pharmacy, and dental claims data uh, for both private and public payer sources across the state. So that'll really give us a uh, glance into what healthcare is costing, how it's, uh, what, you know, what it costs by region, um, you know, a, a allow for a pricing tool where individuals can, can see what certain procedures and services will cost. Um, however, you know, we've also undertaken some work related to data, um, specifically related to the nursing workforce issue specifically. So OHSC received funding in the FY 2023 budget to support the collection and reporting of nursing data um, from individually licensed nurses as well as nursing schools within the state. Um, so that is data that is already collected by the Georgia Board of Nursing uh, and, and the Secretary of State's office. So we are actively working with them um, as that funding has been appropriated uh, to determine what data is already collected through surveys and administered as part of the licensing process, as well as evaluating uh, data that the Georgia Board of Healthcare Workforce already reports on um, for their dashboards, and as well as looking at if additional data uh, could potentially be collected to help inform uh, state policymakers on workforce recruitment and retention efforts. So the data is as good as, you know, what the questions are on the survey and, and what's being reported. So are there opportunities to um, uh, ask additional questions to really uh, uh, get at the, the information we need as a state? Uh, to really make informed decisions and see where the gaps are um, in our system. Um, also on this effort, uh, Ch Chet mentioned this briefly, uh, we are also, uh, we're working and collaborating with the Georgia Data Analytics Center, um, which you know, helps take data that the state already collects across many state agencies and presents that data in a consolidated aggregated format um, that, that really helps uh, the, the public you know, see it all in one place and puts it in dashboards that make it uh, uh, very clean and presentable. Um, we're also working related to nursing on uh, proposals to help advance nursing education programs and career pathways in order to uh, increase the nursing workforce pipeline and hope to have more to share on that soon. Um, we've also worked um, on a number of initiatives over the last year. Uh, next slide, or, uh, we're on five. Yeah, we're on five, so. Uh, we've also worked on a number of uh, other initiatives um, over the past year that we've been in operation uh, related to healthcare workforce. Um, some of those include um, considerations for adding and credentialing additional provider types. Um, last year, we worked with DCH to expand providers eligible to provide behavioral health services 
And uh, because of this change in the leadership of Commissioner Noggle and her team, uh, providers can now en uh, enroll in psychological and therapy services, uh, that category of service. So really allowing those providers to serve additional uh, populations. Um, and, and those were ideas that were brought to us by providers and you know, members of the public. So that, that, that collaboration um, and, and sharing of information is so critical and important to addressing a lot of the challenges that we face. Um, additionally, we've been working with other agencies to identify uh, new provider types or licensures that could increase the number of clinicians and practitioners across the state. We've also um, been evaluating board rules and existing licensing requirements, uh, so, you know, supervisory requirements, ratios, degree program requirements. I know some of the commission members uh, touched on that earlier. Uh, we're also working with agencies uh, to help address administrative challenges for providers. So where those administrative uh, burdens or, or things that can uh, make, make uh, their practices operate more efficiently. Um, you know, which, which certainly helps. And then um, continuing to look for opportunities with agencies and stakeholders to uh, expand healthcare education programs and career pathway, pathways and really streamline those and um, identify which ones are working really well and, and where there are opportunities moving forward for uh, new programs. Um, so looking ahead, I am uh, very excited to work with this commission and, and to help identify um, actionable policy recommendations uh, and uh, that can help address our workforce challenges, uh, both short term and long term. Uh, specifically, like a lot of the other members uh, have mentioned, uh, you know, looking at how we can evaluate existing education programs and career pathways, uh, reducing administrative burdens for providers, and offering recommendations that uh, can help retain our existing healthcare worker workers and uh, prevent burnout. So. I hope this presentation has offered some insight into OHSC's uh, role in the in state healthcare landscape as well as state government and the work we've done related to workforce issues thus far, um, and that you won't hesitate to follow up with me um, after our time today, after today's meeting, or going forward um, on ideas specific to workforce or other healthcare issues. Really, like I said earlier, our office frequently meets with. Uh, different uh, industry groups, providers, advocacy groups, members of the public, um, providers, clinicians, um, and other stakeholders to make sure that we're hearing, you know, all viewpoints and really hearing, uh, you know, what challenges are out there and, and what potential solutions could be. Um, so we look forward to being a resource to the commission in any way uh, we can, uh, knowing that addressing these workforce issues is a key driver uh, to increasing access and quality um, to affordable health care. So uh, again, we look forward to, to working with you all over the next several months to help uh, support the commission's work. Thank you. Thank you, Grant. That was great. Thank you. All right. We will move on to the next phase of the agenda, which is our work plan overview. Shall we turn it over? Yeah, thank you, Sean. So next question is really, how are we going to do this work? So again, kind of looking at where are we, where do we need to get to, by when, and then how do we find the solutions to close those gaps? So um, anyone that knows me knows that I love data. If I could put metrics and lead and line measures on this thing, I would, but for another day. Um, but so we're excited to, to, to start the work plan and kind of get your, get your feedback. Um, we have engaged uh, McKinsey, as a consulting firm to help staff and do some of the background work, compilation of data and data analysis and to support us through this effort. So you'll see some of their folks both that work in Georgia routinely as well as some of their national experts on both healthcare and labor uh, workforce um, as we conduct these meetings. I think what you'll see is a series of, let's see, five additional meetings, hopefully, um, not hopefully, most of them will have an in-person component. We will always maintain a virtual option for the public and for those of the, you that are either unable or can't travel to be with us in, per, in person, but, but certainly want to have a lot of collaboration around the table and a room together in the months uh, ahead of us. We are planning tentatively to also um, hold two sort of public open forums. We know that many of our partners and the healthcare associations and the state have done a lot of this work already. I think, um, Mary, you mentioned that previously, and I know that we have worked uh, in partnership with DCH and GHA, our great partners there, on some of these issues already. And so I think it's important to hear all of those inputs 
on both what, what the concerns are, what the challenges are, and what some of those opportunities are uh, represented by the association. So we're looking forward to those dates as well. I'm gonna let Sean walk us through this chart that you see on your screen. And this is just, again, as it's labeled, our initial perspective on how we might progress through this, but certainly we wanna get your feedback um, in the coming days and there'll be opportunities to do that on how we organize this work. So Sean, I'll let you walk us through. Absolutely. So you will see, um, based on this work plan, our first few months are really focused on data, gathering the data that we believe will help drive our conversations and the decisions on where we're going to focus our efforts. So in July, beginning in July, continuing in August, you'll see we'll have um, interviews with you, the commission members, and other stakeholders to try to gather that data that we need to give us the information um, to drive our conversation. So in August, in beginning this month, we begin the interviews. Um, we also pull data from publicly accessible sources on where we are today. Um, we will also identify the preliminary uh, professional uh, professions that we want to potentially take a deeper dive into based on that data. Once we gather the data, we bring it to you to the commission to review and help refine the direction to focus where we um, um, place our efforts, right? So that's our first commission meeting in August. We begin having those conversations and behind the scenes, working with the stakeholders to pull that data. In September, we have our first forum that will include associations and providers to continue gathering data and having discussions about pain points and things of that nature. So October, we have our second commission meeting, and then we start developing our, the potential opportunities that we see based on that data, and we continue refining it. In November, we have our second open forum with educators and training programs, gather, continuing to gather data, coming back in December and continuing to refine our message and those potential opportunities. So that's where we landed um, with our strategy. Um, right now, we really want this to be data-driven. So um, we're gonna spend those first few months working on that data. Hey, thanks, Sean. Um, again, and we'll continue to refine that. I mean, there's so much of this needs to be based on where can we get the most bang for our effort and these recommendations? What are the specific fields or geographic areas that need the most support first immediately, and then how we sustain those in the longer term. And so we need to pull in our, our USG partners, our private post-secondary institution partners, the technical colleges, talk to the folks in the K through 12 industry and, and look at those opportunities that currently exist in college and career academies, the pathways, the HOPE grants, the dual enrollment, all of those types of things, how we make sure that, that, that the students graduating from those credentialed programs are ready to, to deliver care at the bedside on day one. What are, as someone mentioned, the innovations that, that we need to explore and maximize in terms of availability uh, to clinicals? Um, so lots of different things to look at when we figure out where exactly, and it may be a multitude of areas, where we exactly need to focus our efforts. Again, realizing that we can't boil the ocean in this singular report. So um, certainly know that all of you have on the ground, real world experience and, and have been um, faced with these challenges day in, day out. I'm looking forward to our next opportunity to get together in person. I know that you all have been in person for the last two years. I have been in person the last two years and so has uh, much of the DCH staff as we have worked to support you. Um, and so looking forward to convening this group in August. Um, our plan is to convene the, the next meeting on the campus of Mercer University in Atlanta with their School of Nursing. Um, towards the end of the month. And we are so appreciative of Mercer being willing to host us. And so we hope that many of you will be able to join us there at live and in person. Again, we'll maintain the um, Zoom option for either public viewership that, that can't attend in person or any of you that, that can't um, travel to be with us, but certainly want to invite everyone to join us in person on that campus. In September, we are planning to be um, in Augusta with Augusta University, one of our teaching hospitals, to look at some of the work they're doing and to continue our conversations and examining the fact based on 
on what um, we really need to focus on. Um, and that may actually also serve as one of our open forums. In October, we are planning to be at Albany Tech down near Phoebe. And I know that they have a great partnership uh, between those two institutions. And I'm hopeful we can highlight that while we're there, we can continue our work. In November, we're hopeful to be in the Savannah region. We looked at where most of you um, currently live or work, and you're either in metro area or south and east of the metro area. So we're trying to uh, be geographically representative and, um, and hope to be in the Savannah area with another public forum in November. And then we're currently working to secure some uh, room potentially um, back in Atlanta at the Capitol in December as we start to review our final recommendations and report to finish up by the end of December. So I um, will send out those dates and times that you see there. This uh, presentation will be posted on our website, which is linked to from um, DCH. You won't see DCH on this letterhead. This is not a community health initiative. We are staffing it and leading it, but this is a collective effort. So um, you'll see those on our page these resources on our website on a page dedicated to the Healthcare Workforce Commission, but we'll also send out meeting invitations specifically to the commission members with these locations and times um, as we nail them down in the next few weeks. Um, as you, you'll see on the, you might not be able to see it on this page, but um, it is on there, then we'll make sure you have it. We've also set up a specific email address for the commission. It's hcwf.commission at dch.ga.gov. And Sean and I will be monitoring that. Um, if you don't already have my personal information, we'll make sure that you get it so that commission members can reach out to me or anyone on the staff if should you have a question. Um, let me pause there and just um, do a little temperature check. See if anyone has any initial feedback, any initial thoughts. I know the timeline and the work plan looks like a lot. It is. We're going to be calling you individually within the next couple of weeks to set up time to speak with you as we also call and set up time to speak with our, our partners and collaborator, collaborators at the associations at our educational institutions, like I mentioned. Um, so be looking for those phone calls. When we come to talk to you individually, um, feel free to, to bring other staff from your organization uh, so that it's representative of your entire organization you know, if you're the chief nursing officer, feel free to include the rest of the perspective for, for your facility um, and, and don't feel like you have to just limit it to yourself. But um, we've got our work cut out for us. I'm excited to see what we can do together. I'm um, confident that we're going to produce a good report for the governor that we can deliver in December. But again, let me pause and just do a little, we'll see if anyone has any feedback or any initial thoughts. Um, feel, I think you can unmute yourselves if you're a commission member. Commissioner, this is Mary Chapman. How are you? Good. Hi, Mary. Thank you for being with us. You're so welcome. It's great talking to you again. Um, I love the um, the diversity of membership on the uh, commission. Um, as you just mentioned, the continuum, um, perhaps the uh, only representation um, that uh, is not on the commission, but I know that you're going to connect to is that notion of uh, early student programming. Mm -hmm. um, so from the um, high school and the sort of academic side is, is perhaps a, not a gap in the membership, but I know, like you just said, that we would super focus on that as a part of that continuum of uh, engagement. Um, but again, thanks for the opportunity and look forward to meeting you all in person. Thank you so much. Any other questions or comments? Great. Well, we're going to get you out on time today. Um, be looking for a uh, meeting invite soon for our next meeting in August, as well as um, touch points between now and then. Um, we appreciate you and appreciate the work um, you have already done to serve Georgians and the work that you're about to embark on to serve them as well. So thank you. And we look forward to talking and working with you very soon. Have a great afternoon, everyone.